Is your grandmother visiting you or something? That's his GF. No, um, no I was chanting to the machine spirits and that my microphone could work. Ah. Uh, well, I'm glad your microphone works. So, grandmothers, right? What's the deal with that? Oh, there we go. Yeah, what was their uh, problem? What? What? What is... <sighs> it's all about dying with your family around you, holding your hand. Ready to pull the life support plug so that you can go away with your loved ones. Well, that's, that's very wholesome. That's what, that's what. Don't, you know, don't. You're going to die alone if you don't, if you don't breathe. Grandmothers, they, uh, they know. Is that why they're always asking you um, when you're going to give them grandkids? Uh, uh, yeah. No. Well, no. Well, I don't know, actually. See, because why would grandma care about whether or not you have your loved ones when you die? Well, she doesn't care about you. She wants grandkids holding her hand. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So you have more loved ones when you're done. More, exactly. more hands holding your hands. So that you can, you can suck a little bit of their life energy right before, right before your cum toes finally catches up with you. Just so you can feel that last bit of warmth. They need more people to hold their hands like they're an accessory, like a, a bracelet. It's like, it's like guardrails, so you don't go to hell. So you don't fall into the, into the hell pit where all the virgins go. Where they belong. That's right. Those disgusting incels. Out of my hospital. I go to heaven to get away from incels. That's why. Right. That's why. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, nothing hell, good can be hell said Hell is about not that. having sex because there is nothing worse. They deserve every minute of the eternal fire that they get. Just disgusting individuals. How can you go through life like They're that? Like not even people. Barely human. They, they have horns growing on the back of their heads. And, uh, and, and they leave like this kind of white dust behind falls out of their hair and pants and uh and uh it's like dandruff it's like i don't know they're they're, they're yeah it's like foot powder but it comes from the foot face from the face. It comes from the face. They can't even grow a beard. It's pathetic. They have a cloud of pheromones about them. Just follows them everywhere they go. So that's what that's toxic masculinity right there. Exactly. You know, polite circles call it musk. I don't want that on my deathbed. Oh no. I want I want only female grandkids. I only want granddaughters to hold my hand. <laughs> I 
want I want young girls with me in my hospital bed before I die. Our insides should be drowned in the bathtub. It's it's the it... no, I, it's not humane. We should. Young boys should be taught what being on your on their deathbed is like it's by make them vegetables, make them should be kept in a vegetative state. Get a bunch of them together, that's a tarred salad. The end goal is to have plenty of young girls sitting on your parallel body on the bed. Like I, Holding your hands. Yeah. And just have like All a lot 72 of them. of them holding your hands. A lot Telling of you, you you're a good person. Your last you're a death good person. Battle. You were a good person in your life. You are a good person. All of those beatings, that's under the bridge now. <laughs> and the more young girls you have to sit on you, that's more body area covered to cover all the bases it's it's so it's so you don't feel cold when you find finally die it's so that you can go to heaven with the young girls you get to have them in heaven so they, they can well they can all like suffocate you to death like how bees use their body heat to kill a wasp and or hoard it and and then you sap their life energy so that they all die too that's 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 what being that's what feeling loved is like it, it's like having 72 young girls cook you alive with their body heat so that you can absorb their life force and ascend to heaven, where you will be greeted as a good person. You are you are a good person. You are a good person. You know, from now on, I'm going to live my life with the goal of dying like that. That's uh, the only way to live life. That's always been the goal. Anything short of that is failing your biological impulses. I just I just don't understand people who um who don't want that. I don't understand how someone could not want um to be smothered on their deathbed by by children it's it's just the natural order of things it's how the world works yeah Lifelong homeostasis, but it's emotions, and it's and it's beautiful. The only way to be a good person. 
and and I, I and when when I die on my deathbed, I want to be wearing my wedding dress. And I want my dog's ashes to be set next to me. Um, and I want the soundtrack to Friends to be playing in the background. Um, I want everyone who has ever said a positive thing to me in my life to be buried along with my corpse. Alive. Um, and I want, I want a celebrity to read the final rites um, before the football match begins. Uh, sounds like a good way to go. You have to, you have to start with the end in mind. If you don't think about your funeral every day, then you can't get anything done correctly. Because, because if you're not working towards, towards that funeral, um, then that means you can't set objectives for yourself in life. And then you are inherently incompetent. Well, that funeral and the moment of death is, is the ultimate goal. If you're not working towards the ultimate goal, you're not accomplishing anything. Well, I mean, what's the point? You gotta get the, uh, the handhold. You have to think from the end to the beginning. That's the way things work. You know, you think from the end to the beginning. You work back from the from the final result, and then you get there. And then around the time that you get to the middle age, then you're you thinking from the back to the beginning matches up to where you are in life, and then you cross over to thinking about the past until you kill yourself. I'm a good person, but I'm also a productive person. Because you can't be a good person if you're not productive. Your production is the only measure of worth. I think what yeah. you put out. That's happiness. That's happiness right there. And when you when you don't work, that's religion. It's religion that kills people. Because if if you don't if you're not within one standard deviation of um so of, uh, of your peers, then that means that you're doing something wrong. So, uh, what is this book saying? I, what What is this thing called imagination and thinking? I, I've never... How does one do these things? How does one imagine? So, most people think that they're thinking, but it's not true. Because they haven't learned to be thinking yet. Because you need education to think. So, what education does is that it makes you think a lot. And... It makes you like really think, like not think, think, like really think. So um, education is a slip of paper that you pay money for, uh, measured by your produce. So you have to be productive to be able to, f to afford an education. You know, it's, it's measured in units of currency. Yeah. Yeah. That's why, that's why people who, uh, it's why bad people, bad, yeah. Because more expensive degrees means you're a more productive person. 
because it means you have better education and that you can think better. By being a more productive person, you're a better person. You're a better person. So having that's how, that's how you make more degree. Grandkids. Yeah, having an expensive you degree more. means you're a better person. Because if you produce more daughters than other people, that means that you're a better person than them. And that you get to educate others as well. That is the peak of enlightenment, is when you have achieved apex uh, material gain. And then you, and then you are the apex uh, moral person. Heaven is a college campus. Because it, that's where you that's where you go to class to learn about how to be in in your next reincarnation of, of life. What if someone just shot up the college campus though? So that that well that's Satan. That's Satan. But no, but God put him up to it, so the shooting would be an inside job. Well, uh, heaven is perfect and has no virgins, so therefore there are no shootings. That makes sense. Yeah, it's, because, it's the way things work. Yeah. That's why heaven is perfect. Because virgins aren't allowed to be reincarnated, because they haven't made enough grandkids. That's why... They're, they're a lost cause. Even even the heaven school of life can't fix them. They should have they should have gone to more clubs when they were in high school. To learn to socialize and think. Because if you can't think yourself then you can't be productive. So, and, moral yeah. of the story, go to school, kids. You have to achieve peak grandkid to degree productivity. So that you can be a good person when, you, when you're dying on your deathbed. Uh, you don't want to be a bad person. Bad people go to hell. Bad people don't get a deathbed. Because in OCD countries, um, there's an average of 4.6 beds per thousand persons. Which means... Yeah, you know. Which means in the hospital, you, you don't get a bed if you're a bad person. Which proves without a doubt that all soldiers and the people mass killed by those soldiers... All deserved it. You know, we should bomb every country that is poor because obviously they're bad if they can't afford beds for dying people. No. They, they clearly deserve it. Really, it's bombing is really a figurative term when you consider that there are major restructuring efforts and initiatives to establish democratic governments um, in uh, in every country that um, was pacified. Well, yeah, we're good people. That's why we try and make these people good people too so that they can be productive too. Exactly, so they can go to college and have grandkids. It's the school of life. Clearly poor people and 
need to be bombed so that they can die and go to school of life in heaven to learn how to be productive. Exactly. That's what the good let people God have gone to the school out. of life many times already. That's what it means to say let God sort them out. Just if they can't be productive, just shoot them all and then in heaven they will learn. I don't know what's hard to understand about this. This is why less intelligent people have more grandchildren you know, because they have to make up for their lack of degree and have more grandchildren so they can boost the grandchild to degree ratio exactly and you know with the overpopulation issues that the world has been having lately it is our moral imperative to uh, spread the ability to have a college degree. The foundation on which the freedom and happiness of all persons in the world rests upon uh, is college education. Without it, entire countries would just fall apart. That's what the West is built on. Where does marijuana tie into this? Now that is an excellent question. It's an anti-virginity drug. Everybody knows marijuana is an aphrodisiac. Makes sense to me. It, it is. It increases performance. That's why they, they ingest it during Netflix uh, ceremonies, Netflix rituals, because consuming the TV is a, a spiritual experience. It's metaphysically fulfilling. And it should be treated as thus. You know, the only people who say bad things about the Netflix ritual, uh, Netflix and marijuana ritual, are just small-minded, you know, they're probably small-minded virgins. It's classic sour grapes. Just try to poison the well. They're poisoning the well. They have to That's shut true. down the discourse because now they have no argument. you're poisoning the well. You are poisoning the well. Poisoning the well. You all are. Poisoning the well. It sounds like we're not the ones poisoning the well. He who smelt it, dealt it. I have never poisoned a well in my life. I'm not one of those disgusting incels you're talking about. See, this, and this is why the CIA poisons the water supplies in other countries. It's because they're poor incels who can't afford beds or TVs. We 
we have to that's when poisoning the well becomes productive because you're poisoning unproductive people that makes sense and we need to turn the world into a parking lot until only productive people remain for the optimal productivity to meet the deadline set by the 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 good people when they pass down their doctrine to show us how we could be good people you know without that that vital structure and guidance people wouldn't know how to live their lives it's not even optional anymore we have to have that And you look at these poor, disgusting countries full of poor, disgusting people. Um, a very you, a culprit emerges um, as religion. It's religion. Because religion is anti-education. You see, religion is intellectual virginity. Um because religion education is is um, we need more education so that we have less religious in cells uh, that go to hell um, and so that we can be productive well I have, I have a question about that something that I'm genuinely not sure about how does the uh, the Catholic Church play into that? Because, as far as I know, they're extremely pro grandchildren. Are they? Is that just a relic from before education existed? You see, this is this is the classic um, poor people compensation met strategy. Um, uh. Clearly, clearly, they their complete lack of education. Um, is what spurs this uh, this need for more grandkids uh, forward. Uh, but if they would have uh, if they would have gone to college, they would know that uh, the combination of education and grandkids is actually exponential. Uh, the more you have, the, the more you have of both. Um, as a uh, diversified productivity, uh, good person portfolio. Yeah, I see. So in, in just having a lot of grandchildren, they're missing one of the key elements. They're just not competitive in, in the current globalized environment anymore. Um, and now that having grandchildren is being outsourced to uh, uh, to major specialty centers and uh, and uh, yeah and Catholicism is irrelevant um, for the 21st century. I understand. It's all religions actually. We have to outsource productivity because the native population is becoming incels. Well, like you said, we've already outsourced one of the major uh, aspects of productivity, the, the having of grandchildren. It's almost entirely occupied by uh, the, uh, the special occupation centers. Rwanda is the next Singapore um, because they control all that, all the grandchild capital. Yeah, the uh, the human capital. Um, yeah, the human capital. Um, 
big big college business um, to be made in uh, in Rwanda right now. It's a gold rush, you know. You know, somebody's got to educate these people. Just for their own good. If only they had colleges, they would be the most productive people in the world with all those grandkids that they have. Yep, that's the only thing holding them back, the lack of education. The and lack of colleges, it's, yeah. It's a travesty, really. We, sh we should not stand by and let this happen. This is why we need to bomb poor countries. That's why we need to bomb Rwanda. And yeah, poison Rwanda, the Rwanda in particular. But really, you could, you could just make the generalization and say, we have to bomb all poor countries. I, I like to think in terms of concentric influence zones. Um, you see, you see, Rwanda, it's right in the middle of Africa. That's your, uh, that's your business district. Um, and then you have the, um, right around Rwanda, you, you have like, you have the Congo and you have, um, um, these other uh, African countries, um, that's, uh, that's the inner city. It's the inner cities um, for the, for the un uneducated, um, unproductive people. And then you have the affluent, uh, the affluent suburbs, uh, that's Lagos. Um, that's, uh, that's Libya, that's, uh, that's Somalia. And then way on the outskirts, um, you know, in like Morocco and South Africa, that's uh, that's the suburbs. Mm -hmm. It's the golden ratio right there. No, I definitely see where you're coming from. It's a it's a much more humanizing outlook to it. Really, it's it's all about turning Africa into one productive super college exactly you have it exactly right with that the final goal is just ultimately educating every african they really have the greatest potential uh, oh, people undeniably their, their natural grandkid to education ratio is through the roof, uh, far superior to any kind of uh, white or Asian ratio that's been observed in the wild or in controlled experiments um, in colleges. Yeah, there's, there's no contest. I think that... Uh, that all life is sacred and that um, really the next step in innovation is um, is, uh, is uh, creating colleges for animals um, because if we can teach mosquitoes uh, to be productive uh, then their ratio would uh, transcend um, any kind of human performance by a factor of a million. And that, that is the end goal again, as it were. Just uplifting every species on the planet. Uplifting mosquitoes, because mosquitoes well, are the most productive species uh, in nature. You know, the, the insect family is vastly underutilized. No, no, just mosquitoes. Just. just well, I'm speaking in generalizations right now. Yes, but that's that's counterproductive, and clearly you need you need you should take the course about concerning covering this material in um, college, uh, the College of Life. Biology. See, I, I will admit my 
in my uh, applied biological um, yeah that that area of study was not my main focus the applied biological productivity studies I was much more interested in the theoretical sides of things but you know never stop learning should be a lifetime student everybody should be a lifetime student just because you have one degree doesn't mean you're finished learning when you tell someone to educate themselves you're basically saying they kill themselves to pass away dig with dignity on a hospital bed because else you don't get to go to the uh the college of life in heaven it's not a sentiment that should be interpreted with animosity i mean telling somebody to educate themselves is the the highest form of respect it's the thinking man's namaste or women's or mosquitoes you know inclusivity is is necessary in this new age the productivity looks beyond just the surface level when productivity is transcendental because all resources must be utilized and while not all resources are equal all resources can be utilized equally to not do so is equivalent to a sin this is why all of reality needs to be procedurally assimilated into colleges in colleges or parking lots colleges Parking lots are really just the the waiting area. Do uh, you you include them in the in the campus? So I would say that um, the parking lot is is a is the pre college experience. Mm -hmm. It's it's a purgatory in a sense. A purgatory, but also with that aspect of productivity to it, because while you are in in a waiting area like that, you're also working towards something. You're not just sitting. You're not just stopped. So even even parking lots are productive. A parking lot is very it's productive because I mean, what what do you, what do trees do? Nothing productive. It's an aspect of if you are out in nature, you're not being productive. The nature must be washed with asphalt and concrete to keep people within society in order to obtain optimal education and productivity 
in order to you know, achieve optimal productivity. Goal in and of itself. Now you're you're spading under the natural world trying to bring about a transcendence of sorts. Is there any higher goal? Is there any higher call? I, for one, am really a fan of putting trees in parking lots. Um, because that's that's the way God intended it. You know, that that right there is the second fastest way to get to heaven. Putting trees in parking lots. Being the tree in the parking lot. Or you're gonna have I, to. I, I want I want a tree seed to be put in in my anus and to be buried um, face first into a parking lot patch. I'm gonna ask you to break that one down metaphysically for me, if you don't mind. So you see, the seed is is um, the transcendental gift of education. Um, and by putting the transcendental gift of education into your anus, you are uh, reproducing in a ritual, uh, really, uh, the insertion of education into uh, the grandchild area, which is uh, the anus. Um, so that the combination of both uh, Con converts your body uh, into a college, uh, which is which is the tree. Fascinating. Because because when you go in, into the that's the tree going up, that's going to heaven. Uh, it's, it's it's an allegory, just a. A visible, a parable, if you will. A parable, even better. A clearly visible. Moral. A teaching instrument. That's the college aspect to it. You know, a teaching instrument guiding students in this world to their potential. By becoming a the tree, galaxy. you become the college. It's like it's like fetal position yoga. It's about humility and empathizing and emotional intelligence. You're sacrificing your humanity, spading yourself under for the benefit of everybody. It's beautiful. And a good thing. <clears throat> oh, it's... There may not be a better thing. Besides, you know, obviously, having grandchildren and getting college degrees. No, there's not. The galaxy. Uh, it's truly inspiring. All inspiring.
Today I uh, I pulled off the classic incel move. I um I got a sexually promiscuous male peers of mine or well-adjusted uh, productive individuals to uh, to invite me to a restaurant um, so that we may break bread over talk of uh, education in Africa. And it occurred to me that really the greatest milestone on the way to getting to the um, to reaching um, a a post grandchild abundant state on the deathbed <laughs> uh, is marriage, and so and so I ask them, I I I ask I ask the question was how will your wedding be? And this was a 40 minute conversation about. There's nothing like listening to grown men tell you about how they've dreamed their wedding day would be. Nothing is more promising of many grandchildren. And I, as an incel, of course, did not contribute towards the check. Um. <laughs> such as such as the curse of unproductive individuals. Now, I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was speaking with a heretic right now. I'm I'm now a recovering, if you will, um, a recovering itself. Okay. I see how it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, the being an incel was at lunch. Um, recovering. <laughs> well, it's it's good to hear, brother. I'm I'm glad that. Your your metaphysical state is on the path to education. I have inserted the seed into my anus. And now I'm just in the search of the promised parking lot. You are on the road to being a productive individual. That, that's what we should all aspire for, is it, getting that seed up our anuses and hanging around parking lots. That is the peak of enlightenment. No, no, no. You must, you must find the promised parking lot. You see, not all parking lot have the same uh, soil constituency and the right humidity for uh, your particular, um, your particular flesh uh, to really sprout uh, to its full potential. So you see, it's all the nice, uh, rich loam, the, the, you know, the, the, the really nice, fluffy, fertile kind of ground. Um, that's really for the most, it, it's, 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 it's really, it's an awe, it's, it's for the chosen people. It's for the chosen people uh, to be able to plant, to be planted there. Um, um, but one must start one cycle um, looking for, uh, you know, clay rock beds and um, limestone also, also a great starter. Uh, and that's your starter thing. tree patch. Yeah, it's, it's a journey. You don't instantly want to bury yourself in rich dirt like that. You're not ready for the loan yet.
but once but once you finally get there, once you finally get to be planted into the loam, that's um, that's shalom. That's when you've made it. And you'll be even more thankful for the journey than you were. Because, you know, it's all about the journey. The it's destination all, 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 itself. What it the is. destination is not the important part. We are inherently a nomadic people. It's just simple anthropology. We need to collect education from as, as many sources as we can uh, before bringing it back to the promised land in order to bloom to our fullest potential and ascend to the College of Life and become teachers there. You see, you see, the College of Life has many branches, and in, on every branch um, is, uh, is a different, is a different uh, proficiency um, of, of education, productivity itself, uh, achieved by the teachers, the um, the accumulation over centuries of all the education uh, in exceptional individuals um, who reached the promised land and became teachers. And all, all these branches, um, perches, perches uh, the passing souls between reincarnations so that they may learn uh, from the teacher there. College of Life truly is a place where all beings can, can come together and speak one language and truly become one of one mind and, and productive together um, so that they could reach into the heavens um, and, and acquire the education of God itself so that they can become supremely productive. It's not arrogance. It's it's the highest height of so humility. That the universe can reincarnate when it is when it is produced again um, by highly capable teachers on the seventh branch of the of the college of life in heaven. And if they don't accept that, we should send them there by force. Niggers. 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 No more needs to be said. Just niggers. Niggers. How, what do we do about them? Well, you can't educate them. They're, they're some of the least productive people. If you can call them people. They don't really, even know their grandchildren. Someone who's never seen the deathbed before cannot be considered a person. And is clearly of the realm of the animal. Spiritual incels. They still live in the trees of ignorance, from whence they must climb down in order to climb into the tree of life. 
they're they're metaphysically incels. They are the incel of the soul. But they do have bigger penises. Well, you know, it's... It's all a balance. That's how this universe works. You know, if you're lacking in one area, you're excelling in the other. You know, look, just look at the, your typical African. Tons of grandchildren. No education. Look at your typical nigger. We should reduce the size of penises so that and cells will be forced to compensate by giving in and getting education. We must, we must. That's exactly the penises of males at birth. That is exactly so how to solve education. it. In cells, dicks are too big. That is precisely it. We have to reduce it. That is no. why they're not productive. Listening to that, it's Balance not their restored. fault. It isn't their fault. They're the real victims. It's just a, a quirk of their birth that they were made like that. You know, the reason that they can't have grandchildren, you know, the reason that they're not educated, it's just because their penis is too big. When they try to have grandchildren, it, it kills the woman because the penis is too big. You know, they would be good people. I mean, that's, that's why they are what they are. They're incels because they don't want to kill people. But unfortunately, they can't be good people unless they have grandchildren. Or if they're educated. And since having the grandchildren is not an option, unless, or has not been an option up till this point, education was the only recourse. Penis collection should begin immediately. We should set up Chinese restaurants and when they rip off the, uh, there's like a coupon at the bottom of, of drinks, drink cups they can get and it's a, it says something like, like they, they have a chance of winning a chance to get their dicks ripped off. The incel lottery. Where you win a chance to get your dick removed. Then we send people to the houses of the incels and have small Chinese people wielding hooks, driving a monster truck, bust in and rip their dicks off. With chopsticks. Well, it's it's the best tool for the job. You just pick the best tool for the job. Because the Chinese are are this are the least endowed peoples in the world, which is why their education levels are through the roof and they would make a perfect enforcement and penis inspection um, it's, department it's, it's all in the legal. New College of Life. It's all legal too. The second that they they buy a medium-sized drink, 
you and and you it enables you into a binding contract to get your dick ripped off so it's all legal there's no interference it's just the terms and conditions create a weird partnership with monster energy and um it's just the way it is it's a classic rip and win prize like you get your dick ripped off you don't even have to read it if you buy the drink you've consented to it that's how game fueling works You can buy it with a, as a side with some wasabi and teriyaki fries. Edible uh, dollies, those hand trucks m made of, with like chocolate tires. You get a chance to win a car, but it's just to get your dick ripped off. Well, what are incels most likely to do? Are they going to try and win a car, or are they going to go to a Chinese restaurant? They're going to try Well, you know Elliot Roger had a car. This is true, BMW, but... BMW, in fact. Wasn't that exactly. one... Exactly. I believe that was one that he actually uh, purchased, or his family purchased. But many incels... Are poor. That is a good point. However, it's not an across the board kind of thing. This will remove the. This will balance out the huge problem of poor, unproductive incels. This will take out the vast majority restoring order. I mean, it's really cut and dry. I mean, cut and dry, rip and win, dine and dash. This is all, this was all written long ago. It's not rocket science or brain surgery. No, certainly not. And those people have a much higher education level than, I think, any of us. But uh, we're perfectly capable of understanding this. It's, like you said, it's not brain surgery. It's just simple applied anthropology. It's just sociology. Philology, if you will. You know, just being able to observe how the how the society functions. I mean, it's it's not something that takes twelve years of college education. A simple four will suffice. Really, just reading the digest on Freud is all you need to get through life as an educated person. You know, if, if you're an educated person, that's fine. You can understand that. All you need to understand people is um, how the, their penis size affects their personality and productivity. Things really are not that complicated, and it all boils down to that. Simple axioms of nature. You know, Freud was a genius. One could uh, even say you... that Freud was a chosen one. He's infallible. 
you know, if you look at all of his detractors, they all have one thing in common. Big penis. Exactly. It's not a coincidence. There's no such thing as coincidences. That's what Freud said. And I Freud believe was him. quoting black science men at the time. So it's really a doubly educated parable, if you will. I, for one, advocate for repeats in, in cell social experiments in order to collect more data that can be corro corroborated in order to better understand and study in the incel so that these oh. violent outbursts can be predicted. More data is always needed. You know, like, like I mentioned earlier, never stop learning. You mean that the sheer Freud's greatest works was were produced um, after Columbine for obvious reasons, and science needs science needs sacrifices sometimes. And they were produced on his deathbed after Columbine. It's controversial, but it's true that science advances the most um, when it isn't hindered by. Uh, petty big dick morality. I believe that if we, the FBI is already infiltrating and rounding up in several communities, mustering a list of anyone who admits to actually being both male and a virgin. Because if they're female and a virgin, then they are, they are, all, they're put on a different list and given a designated hand to hold. No, a designated uh, Tyrone to uh, to visit them. We can uh, utilize the incels we round up and conduct experiments on them to understand how we can mitigate this phenomenon. You see, because since Africans are the highest potential um, animal on the planet, uh, their males uh, must be given to young virgin females uh, in order to cure their penis envy. That's what Freud said. But the males are, are uh, unproductive. They're useless. Um, they are a counterproductive resource and um, any actions going forward that would contribute to furthering the cause of the College of Life should be focused on stemming the threat that they pose to education. And so to do that, I, I, I propose that we organize more school shootings um, to produce the data necessary for a final push against the incel. That makes sense. That's like... Well, that's like a controlled fire to put out a bigger fire to starve the other fires. Yeah, because if... if the, the fire has the bigger fire has no fuel anymore then you have defeated the fire exactly you, you have to suffocate the fire with another fire I propose that we um, we use the ancient Roman practice of um, of 
of killing one in 10 uh, schools, decimation, if you will. Uh, yeah, it, to the it data worked necessary. well for them. You know, Roman society was long considered the most enlightened, even after it passed. Decimation is the optimal policy for most things. It's, it's one of those natural ratios. Um, you see, when, when you gather around the holy ritual of the deathbed, um, one should hope for nine grandchildren so that one's death becomes a removal of one-tenth decimation. This is how the pharaohs were made. That's how, yeah, from the beginning, that's how kings, all kings rise to power, is decimation. So that they, they build the greatest deathbeds of all in order to ascend higher in the college of life. Well, you just look at the history books. You know, everybody did that. It was common practice. The Holocaust? Another excellent decimation. Which is why it was called the Holocaust. Because it was the cost necessary. Paul is actually Hebrew for 10. Yes. And hull holes in Russia, that means 10, 10. Big, big accounting culture in the Jewish community. You can see how they would really have this uh, this process down to a science. Decimation. No. Truly, the most humane course of action is killing 10% of the population and then bombing all the poor countries. I can't wait to get surgery so that I can have a vagina. Vaginas are reverse penises, so they technically make you more intelligent. So what happens if you don't get every fruit? Is that what the giant heart that we saw before was for? That's what I was trying to figure out. I thought that was the end of the game there. You know, I think I read an article that said that it might have been part of my sociology class. Really? You see, that impression of making sense. That intuition that something's right about something you observed. Well, it's just not something you, you, you created about yourself.
Run that by me one more time. You see, feeling like something makes sense is the Internet Explorer of instincts. I'm still not getting it. You see, when you feel like something makes sense, that's just the new car smell of the mind. Oh, okay, okay. I think I understand what, what you're trying to say. Yeah. You just so that's why I'm think suspicious. something makes sense because... Because maybe it's a used car. How can you know it makes sense if you don't actually have enough experience with it? Interacting with it. That's, that's Kant's synth synthetic truths. That's the new car smell. You know, it, it makes sense because it's comfortable and easy. Yes. I definitely... I definitely understand you now. And I, I don't... trust terrifying and difficult things. Because you see, that's that's like the hot garbage smell. It's the Microsoft Word. That's the little uh, spork that comes with salads you buy in the supermarket. Because you see, what is a spork? A spork simultaneously spoons and forks, but both at the same time, so it does neither. See, the spork is paradox. The spork is something that ceases to be in order to fulfill its function. And that's Jesus Christ. In order to be freed from the material world, which is Satan, and Satan is the salad, the sporic must weave and wind in ways unpredictable. Horrifying, one might say. Very, it's all very difficult. It has none of the new car smell. It's the last dinner. And when the unwinding of the cube is perceived by the senses, And the senses become sentient on their own. Or that is, sentience is lended to them by an outward permeating intelligence that created the senses in the first place. So you see, the senses are really informants for the CIA, which is the permeating outside intelligence that created them. That is, that is the salad that wants to misguide the, the spork of your mind as it unravels the cube. Now, when in a situation where sense sleeper agents turn against you, one must first of all be prepared. 
by having a deep mistrust of one's senses, especially the sense that something is, is right beforehand. With that, with that edge over sleeper agent senses, you become superior to the senses, but also sacrificed as you are also the beast on which the sins have been emptied so that you could you can be sacrificed and in your final throes of agony and horror you can at least find the relief that you did not trust logic Because logic is the work of the devil, which is the cube. Yeah. Makes sense to me. I really hate new cars now. I really do. New car smell is toxic mobility. Why not have three wheels? Four wheels is completely unnecessary. Cars should have three wheels. Sheer amount of Did you know that if you had an accident in a three wheel car, you would you would technically improve your ramming power drastically and therefore your chances of defeating the object of defeating the obstacle which threatens your life now we must go back to roman times and apply what they have found through trial and error which is that any good vehicle needs a prow in order to improve its ramming power and penetration power so that no obstacles can stand in, in its way. A three-wheel car with a prow is the ideal vehicle form. Huh. And with enough scientific perfection and air tunnel design, such a car could overcome time itself. So that you can get to, to work on time faster. On time. You see, because the design of the proud tricar is so perfect that it slices the air at high speeds, creating a, a song-like noise, if you will like ripping air is this is the noise that pleases god 
And so God temporarily grants you teleportation and time-bending powers because time and space are really... Um, and so you get to work on time. But I, Four nice wheels here. really is just something that stems from insecurity. You see, four-wheel mentality is having a fear of being kicked over and falling over. But you see, the three-wheel Chanmobile doesn't fear being kicked over because it already has reached speeds, allowing it to be stopped by no obstacles. Huh. One could even argue for a car model that has no wheels and is propelled with a giant rubber band because once, once it reaches a certain speed, it has overcome gravity. Now, has it or... Well, now that, that is a good point, because the wheels are no longer the, the mode of transportation. Indeed. The slingshot reality distortion is. And one could even... One could even conceive of a scenario in which the car is slingshotted, creating a gravity distortion field which brings the workplace to the car. Is it the car that goes to work? Does the car take you to work? Does it strictly matter? As long as you no. get to work. No. No, because the only important, the only, the only real function of a car is, is to have a few masculine seconds of environmental penetration before you arrive at your destination. And we're and back so to penetration. The slingshot provides the ultimate masculine experience. Should incels be forced to drive small vehicles? You see, incels should be forced to, to, to drive three-wheel cars. Because BMW coupés are a perfect example of the insecure car. Of the car that believes it must be stable and does not try to overcome. You, know, you have the Chad tricycle. The slingshot tricycle. In Chrono Trigger, the first time you fight Queen Zeal, she can't kill you because her only attack is elation, which just reduces HP to 1. This means that everyone hits her as hard as possible and doesn't bother with healing. And that, combined with her low HP, means the fight is very short. Several years ago, I did a playthrough, and I didn't remember this. And I had developed a tactic for boss fights of spamming haste until it had no effect, then attacking. Queen Zeal actually has one other move, Death Kiss, because I spent a lot of time spamming haste instead of just beating her. She eventually used the second move. The animation for Death Kiss is her moving to crotch level in front of her target and then bobbing up and down while making sucking noises. The move drains MP. Huh. 
Very interesting. It's very fascinating. This destroys the incel. How to unlock the green thwomp in Mario Kart 64. The only way to break him free is to play a four-player game with Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Toad. It's very important you select the characters in this order. Mario has to be player one, Luigi player two, etc. Now you go to the map and just keep collecting items until you get a power star. Now all you go, all of you, go to the jail cell he is in and touch the gate while activating the star. If you all manage to time it correctly, the cage will break open. And then you unlock the green thwomp, whose name is Mart. It couldn't be more straightforward. It's short for Walmart. Well, I finally figured out what this means. Only it turns out it's just another, it's just one milestone in a giant mystery that Nintendo has been weaving into their shit for literal decades. And nobody's going to believe me unless you follow the clues for yourself. It's not even exclusive to Zelda. Breath of the Wild is one way into the puzzle, but it's not the only one. Anyway, it would be fruitless for me to go into much more detail than this unless I'm willing to commit to making some very long posts slash videos explaining things. Even then it's designed in such but I'm excited for everyone else to catch up to me. Truly. I agree. A very intelligent individual. This was very highly educated. Very productive. I knew a degree in video game Easter eggs would prove so useful. On this piece of background, you can see the same scratches of the tree. It is what they call pyramid because it looks like one from the outpost. You have to do a certain song in front of all three locations that have scratches. That's all I'll say. Yeah, this guy isn't me. He's clearly blatantly trolling. This is what's called a joke, you fucking morons. But I didn't tell you shit about Ocarina of Time because nobody asked nicely. Except to say that it's not something that made sense before Breath of the Wild. And although I already kind of explained it, I'll reiterate because apparently this thread is full of entitled retards who A. seem actively hostile towards the idea of secrets existing despite this being an undiscovered secrets thread. B. apparently think the only class of secrets is Sonic is a playable character, dear shit. C. Can't tell the difference between me and an impersonator Anon, despite the latter making claims which contradicted what I said in the first place. Like, Jesus Christ, is there a guy who had to get retard pills at the door to this thread or what? Anyway, the scratched tree doesn't do anything. I highly doubt there's any code referencing it. It's more of a signature referencing stuff they plan to do in the future. It's not an, an entry point to the puzzle. Before 2015, I doubt there were any games with entry point clues because nobody was supposed to know about it yet prior to that. There are a number of games, no doubt many more than I'm aware of, which tie into the puzzle at this point, though. It's not just Zelda by a long shot, and not even just Nintendo labeled stuff. Almost like there's a giant media conspiracy or something. Investigating mysteries in these games usually leads to a much larger cross-media puzzle, which they've been implementing upside down for a long time, such that it would only make sense later on, yet somehow stretch backwards into earlier games. 
and even retroactively contextualize weird connections between unrelated games that we're all aware of. Continuing that trend, I'm going to assume that future games will make the clues easier and easier to spot until they're eventually hitting everyone over the head with certain revelations that come along with it. With knowledge of later parts, the tree makes sense, but it doesn't fucking do anything. That's Gabala. I recognize that. What does cocaine make you feel like? Uh, backstabbing everyone you know to get more cocaine. It sounds like a good time. Sounds like a regular time, really. Cocaine just brings out the inner animal. It's exorcism. Future tense should be eliminated from languages so that we live in the moment exclusively. I'm glad it will be eliminated. Well, I'm not exactly super excited about who I was paired with, but yeah, there's there's absolutely no reason to even think about anything beyond the present. Because I want to do a great scene, and that pressure is getting to my head, and I want to be successful because. I want to keep on going with my track record. It's important to me. I'm not super excited because I haven't, um, I don't have any uh, attraction to him at all. I think he's nice and he's um, an interesting character for sure, but would I ever, or do I have any attraction to him? No. How do I think today's scene's gonna go? I have no idea. Like Bruce Lee says, be like water. Fill the cup. And we'll see how it goes. What do we do about the subhuman incel problem? Just Maybe kill them all. Export them. Just kill what them all. What do we do with the rest of our garbage? Open the floor, get on the door. Everybody want the dinosaur. One, two, buckle, buckle my shoe, nigga, one, two, buckle, buckle my shoe, pull back the slide, pop in the clip, put a few rounds in that bitch and snort crack. Finer, 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 finer. One, two, buckle, buckle my shoe, nigga, one, two, buckle, buckle my shoe, what, what? Ooh, if the bodies hit the floor, if the bodies hit the floor. Nothing wrong with me. Something's got to give two. Something's got to give three. Something's got to give. All right, they once told me the world is gonna roll me. Oh yeah, turn that up. Turn that up. Shad. She. Looking kind of dumb. Finger and a thumb. Shave for now. On her, on her, on her, on her forehead. Well. It, the years start coming and they don't stop coming. <laughs> Hit the ground running. Makes sense not to live for fun.
Smoke the blunt, take the pain out. Cause if I didn't, probably blow my brains out. I push my fingers into my eyes. It's the Every only day thing. I want to die. That slowly stops the ache. With the pain of the I gotta make it. Cause in the end, it doesn't even matter. I had to fall to lose all my bitcoins. Despite looking at graphs, it didn't even matter. I had to dip to buy the moon. Hi, hi, hello. Constipation, just bleeding. You don't give a fuck. Cause dick is all I'm eating. Nuclear. I'm mild. I'm breaking up inside. Don't want to be an American idiot. So here I am, doing everything I can. Then I'm a Superman. Back of the bus, back of the bus, we don't want you to sit near us. Was that an angelic process song? Yes. People who try to prevent circumcisions should go to prison. Eye for an eye, they should donate their own. If they're already circumcised, they should just donate the rest of it. Mm hmm. So that it can be made into skin products. Yeah, they're, they're doing everybody a favor. So that we can enjoy the present. What else is there? Penis cream. What else is there? Sneed and feed. <laughs> you have to become the Chuck and the Sneed. Was Rey Romano the most powerful female Jedi? Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know a whole lot about Star Wars. What? Rey. Jedi. In 
infinity stones are the most powerful. The infinity dabs. Because he destroys all bipeds. I'm gonna get dabbed on. Just hang yourself. Think about that comment you just posted. Really think about it. Kill every nigger. You are racist and will die for your beliefs. No, I'm not. That was a satirization of what racists actually believe. BBC, I would I would never say something like that. BBC shall raid for eternity. Utilizing its superior virility. The black men no, the black gods shall rule as they were intended. And they're not too happy about that whole slavery thing y'all did. Well, they enslaved the Jews, so it's only fair. They are the Jews, you white toy, the Akkadian. Yeah. You just got checkmated. The people who sold them were whites pretending to be Jews. So, it was all a quid pro quo. Women are just in a conflict to convert themselves to lesbianism before they just let a man pound them in every hole. Especially the wallet hole. No, that's the, the one revenge they get back. Most erotic hole in a roasty is the memory hole. You can hit them where their dad lives. Every hole. You deserve rape. They want to get feeded and seeded. You know, it's a dirty job. But somebody's got to do it. It ain't going to be me. Coke is enlightenment. Coke? What does Coke do? Coke waters the tree of life. Coke. Everybody wants Coke. People love Coke. They're not man enough to take it when it's dangling in front of them. What, you don't like Coke? Requires initiative to obtain Coke. Everybody loves Coke. Only if you're powerful <laughs> enough to obtain it. Quality meme. This is the future of the human race. And it's beautiful. 
It absolutely is. Bug niggers. Only in the literal sense of the word. Get off as Char Charles Manson or Richard Stallman. I don't know what Stallman thinks about Manson. It's practically the same person. It really is. They're they have the same fundamental values. Destroy all bipeds. It's a party, it's a rave. No. No, you are not allowed for choices. Not allowed. This is only... Uh, the machine, only the machine chooses. There is no choice. Don't, um, no. And so uh, you, you should accept really that all is premeditated, determined, and you should be content that mechanistic reality allows you to be because if it were not so then how could you be in order to perceive <sighs> all is dust and to dust we shall return we are the dead we are the dead. Hope rides alone. Mm. Ah. Power. Ah, limitations to mechanistic reality. Which is to say, mechanism is the perceived limitation. One should be grateful. Grateful for the pain that keeps one within consensus. Without pain, where would you be now? Not consensus. You would be in hell. You would be in hell. And nobody wants to be in hell. Right, little boy? And he said, You ready? And why not? Why not, my dear? Knowledge, after all, is power, isn't it? Only believe.
It ain't hard to chuckle. I break them down whether they knuckles. Knuckles. Unlike knuckles, I'm independent since my birth. <laughs> And they say we are cursed. <laughs> 